This is the story of Juma, a Kenyan con artist who enlisted the help of a Nigerian money laundering expert. But long before Juma was known, it was the Nigerian who was well known, Hushpuppy. Hushpuppy flaunted his riches on Instagram, drawing both awe and envy from the more than 2 million users who followed his account. Hushpuppy's address was Palazzo Versace a resident in Dubai. His get-around car was a 2020 Rolls-Royce Cullinan. His timepiece was a Richard Milley wristwatch. His wardrobe was Fendi, Louis Vuitton and Gucci. He chartered private jets, had lunch with famous stars and politicians. He even owned a citizenship to a tax haven, St. Kitts and Nevis. But to become all that, he needed a master artistry of a cybercon from Kenya, one Abdul Rahman Juma. Juma was little known prior to the 100 million shillings haste that he planned and executed. This brought him to international limelight and to the FBI's radar. Born in Nairobi, March of 1993, Juma grew up surrounded by his Somali origin family of brokers and schemers. By the time he was hitting puberty, he had already helped launder millions of his uncle's deals proceeds. This enabled him to travel widely and also work with professionals in banking, IT, and law enforcement. When his peers were swapping SIM cards and pulling petty crimes, Juma was already an expert in using sophisticated computer softwares to mine data of highly confidential financial transactions. He had perfected the art of cybercrime through the following ways. Sending phishing emails that looked like they're from a trusted sender, but their aim was to trick victims into revealing confidential information. Juma also used malicious software to infiltrate company networks and gain access to legitimate email threads about billings and invoices. He then used this information to time requests or send messages so that accountants or financial officers wouldn't question payment requests. This malware also let him gain undetected access into a victim's data including passwords and financial account information. He also made slight variations to legitimate email addresses to fool victims into thinking the fake accounts were authentic, like adding a letter or a full stop to an original email address. That is how, in 2019, he stumbled upon a Qatari businessman who wanted to open an international school in Doha. The school project was to cost $15 million. The investor, therefore, was seeking a consultancy firm that would facilitate the funding. The seed firm would need to be in the project financing space and should have a database of investors seeking to be linked with plausible projects that yield high returns. The firm would undertake paperwork, negotiate the terms, and offer legal advice. It's there that Juma saw the opportunity. He listed himself as the chairman of Westlord Financial Solutions, a finance company based in Upper Hill, Nairobi. He assured the Qatari investor that he had a lender with $15 million ready. Using a hired website developer, he was able to make a complex website that at a glance showed his company had years of experience and millions of dollars in revenues. The Qatari investor was convinced. He thought he was dealing with a legit firm. He flew all the way to Nairobi to send the contract. For his services, Juma was to pocket $225,000 as consultancy fees. The victim wired the money to Juma, expecting that in a few days he would get the $15 million loan and actualize his dream of owning an international school. A few days later, Juma contacted the Qatari, claiming that he had secured the loan. He even sent fake wire confirmation messages purported to be from Barclays Bank New York to the Qatari's National Bank. At this point, 
Juma had contemplated shutting off his communication channel and disappearing into the sunset with the 25 million loot that he had made in less than a month. But because he was an obsequious slave to his glutton, he wanted to rinse off the victim for every possible penny. So he made the Qatari investor wait as he planned for the next bait. Upon discovering that the funds hadn't hit his account, the Qatari investor contacted Juma. Juma was already painting Nairobi with dollars, shopping for slim fit suits, expanding his business stalls in Italy, and planning for destination holiday since it was December. Oh, you mean you have not received the cash? Juma said to the investor. Let me check with New York. Juma's flutter to the desperate investor was another opportunity to get more money. A day later, Juma informed the investor that there was a small delay and the delay would require another payment of $150,000, a release fee of $150,000. The investor was hesitant but he had already seen the wire transfer. He didn't know it was fake. So he thought that it was a small inconvenience but for a bigger good. So he sent the cash to Juma. Within this, Juma was 15 million shillings richer. This was the point that Juma was supposed to vanish. I mean, once the Qatari investor paid the release money, there would be no other excuse as to why the loan was not hitting his account. But Juma was a leech and his host had more blood that needed to be sucked. Juma schemed to have more people enter the game. He needed someone with more experience, someone who could play the role of the banker in New York. Juma contacted his old foe, Hush Puppy. Hush Puppy came in with a wealth of experience. His CV read like a fantasy comic villain. He had defrauded a New York law firm $925 million. He had defrauded Lazio, an Italian football club, three million pounds for a player transfer fees meant for another club. He had also almost defrauded your favorite Premier League club Arsenal for 300 million shillings for another player transfer. Hush Puppy was the to go to in order to graduate into a million dollar scammer. Hush Puppy, under the direction of Juma, contacted the Qatari investor. The Qatari investor thought he was talking with the bank manager. He, Hush Puppy, reported that his bank couldn't release the funds because Qatar was sanctioned by the USA. To assist the investor, Hashpapi asked him to open an account in the USA and deposit $330,000 as money to show that the account was active. Hashpapi acted quickly. He helped the Qatari investor register a business name and even sent fake documents for the investor to sign. The Qatari investor sent the $330,000 thinking that he was opening his account in the USA. But the money was going to Hashpapi and Juma. Within a few days, Juma and Hashpapi had another 35 million shillings paid. By the time the Qatari investor realized that he was dealing with international cyber criminals, Hashpapi had already added a 20 million watch to his collection more cars to his garage and more cash to his stash. Juma was also making big money moves in Nairobi, buying an apartment, buying a sports car and flaunting it in all the big clubs. Hashpapi was all the same happy to flaunt his wealth on Instagram, thanking God for the blessings and urging his followers to work hard. But thanks to his active social media presence, the FBI's finally caught up with him in Dubai and his empire came crashing down. Juma was also arrested in Kenya 
and is now waiting to be extradited to the USA to face charges. Until the next episode, I'm Jeff Kafka.